Hello everyone, my name is Delicious Mugosi and I hope you all are doing well. So, today I want to share with you a deeply personal and transformative journey. I will be opening up to you guys about my experiences of being excluded at the University of Cape Town and also the University of Johannesburg. It's been a challenging road filled with so many ups and downs and I hope that by sharing my story we can all find strength, resilience and courage in the face of adversity. I will be discussing with you some of the challenges that I faced in this journey and some of the lessons that I've learned and the emotions that I had to grapple with you guys so um yeah and i hope that by shedding my light on my struggle i will be able to connect with others that have faced you know similar situation or are currently going through the same situation we're not alone in our journey and together we can find strength and courage to be able to rise above our challenges i also would like to express my gratitude towards those who have been very supportive throughout this journey their unwavering belief in me has been a guiding light and showing me that even in the darkest moments there is love and hope to hold on to so i'm very thankful for everybody who has been you know with me in this journey and before we begin i just want to emphasize that my intention for sharing this story is not to put blame on anybody or to harbor any negativity but rather to encourage empathy understanding and personal growth you know life's twists and turns have led me to new opportunities and i firmly believe that every setback is an opportunity for us to come back stronger and um yeah so thank you for joining me on this journey of resilience and self-discovery i hope that my story can touch your hearts and leave you feeling inspired and empowered so um let's get into it so for those of you who have not watched the video i basically grew up in a village you know had a beautiful childhood i would say and i used to be a top a student you know i used to do debate and um, passed my matric and now we are moving to Cape Town. I applied to study um, at the University of Cape Town in hopes of studying actuarial science. When I got there, I ended up majoring in computer science and then I changed to maths and stats. So at the end of my third year at the university, I was excluded from the university. So now there are a lot of you know reasons that there are a lot of things that played a role in me not being able to get the good grades that i needed in order to pass at university if i were to discuss the whole thing it will probably take the whole video but i'm just gonna you know give you a little bit of a summary at that time i would say i didn't really know what i wanted to study you know, hands me changing majors, you know, I had I'd gone to the university in hopes of, you know, studying actuarial science, now I'm doing computer science, and then I changed to maths and stats. I really was not sure about what I wanted to study, the career path in which I wanted, you know, to follow. And also, I, I think that I believe that the adjustment from high school to university was a bit overwhelming for the younger version of me you know I was coming from a village in Mbobo in Venda going to Cape Town it's a big city you know it's for the first time I'm living there alone by myself with no family you know mentally it was not easy it was a little bit challenging um, yeah but everything other than that I remember I had a single room you know I used to stay at Fuller Hall I had a beautiful single room with beautiful views you know i used to get three meals per day you know from the dining hall which was great so everything was going well except for my academics okay and coming from the background that i came from being a top student that took a mental toll on me you know i did not understand why i was failing Luckily, um, my sponsors had organized for me to speak to somebody when I started failing, which was great because 
this person offered a safe environment for me to be able to express my frustrations without judgment and they were independent of you know my situation which was great i remember they also um referred me to speak to a career advisor you know which was great um, being able to speak to a counselor was great because they helped me identify some of the underlying issues that might have been playing a role in me struggling academically so for example personal issues you know mental health issues so that was great because at that time i was not even aware of some of the issues that you know the counselor was able to brought up you know they also helped me in terms of like building coping strategies you know time management you know setting realistic goals all of those things i feel that you know those um one-on-one -on -one conversation that I had with the counselor was really honestly beneficial to me and my mental health, even though I still was failing at university. It, you know, it also helped me just sort of like build my self-esteem again, because when you're used to passing and used to getting your way all the time and you go to university and you're not getting your way all the time, it affects your self-esteem to be honest you sort of i sort of like lost confidence in my abilities because i was like what is going on and when you go to classes and tutorials and all of those things and you still fail it kind of brings your confidence level down a little bit so yeah mentally i was struggling but i was very fortunate that i had people around me that I can speak to, for example, the counselor. I also had, you know, people in my circle that were helping me. So it was easy for me to be able to open up and tell them like, listen, this is what I'm going through. You know, it's very hard at school. I'm struggling, I'm failing. So it feels great to have somebody that you can speak to and they can listen to you without judgment, you know, because people can be, you know, pretty, pretty judgmental you know and if you're struggling mentally and somebody is being judgmental towards you it just makes it worse you know also you're not even going to end up trusting that person you know you're not going to feel you're not going to allow yourself to feel vulnerable around them because every time you become vulnerable around them they become judgmental towards your situation i remember just after you know um getting excluded um somebody close to me we were on a uh, boat cruise um and back then there used to be stories of students who would commit suicide after they failed at university or they would try to commit suicide after they failed you know so it was pretty scary okay um i remember i was on a boat cruise with this person and they were just you know they spoke to me they're like listen now that you have failed just know that you do not have to commit suicide you know like this is not the end of you you know to be honest in that moment when i found out that i was excluded i was not really i was not even suicidal you know i was anxious and worried about what was going to happen in the future because i knew i had to do the appeal was the appeal going to be successful or not so that was my worry you know anyways i took a gap year the following year um i remember just because i was not busy and also my mind was not occupied with other things other than what had just happened the previous year which was the fact that i was academically excluded you know so i'm supposed to be graduating you know and they are telling me that i am excluded so you can imagine the emotions that i felt i remember um when i was taking a, a gap year there were times i did not even want to get out of bed guys i just wanted to sleep like i could not believe that my reality was what it was you know i felt feelings of sadness you know 
I was disappointed in myself that I went to university. I was not able to do what was required of me in order to be able to get the degree. I felt regret, you know, I was thinking maybe I should not have changed my majors, you know, maybe I should have just stayed with one major, you know. I felt rejection just because, you know, this is one of the best universities in the country and they excluded me. They do not want me to be part of their institution because I failed, you know. It made me question my worth, to be honest, like, because I was very good in high school. I'm like, what happened? You know, are you even worthy to be in one of the biggest universities, you know, in South Africa? Maybe you were not worthy because you failed and, you know, you were excluded. Those were the emotions and thoughts that, you know, was going through my mind at the time, you know. I remember in the previous episode, I told you guys that I also had a boyfriend. We were in a long, you know, relationship, first boyfriend type of thing, you know. <laughs> and then I remember in the beginning of the year, I sort of like had a feeling that, you know, the relationship was coming to an end, guys. Trust your intuition, guys. My feeling turned out to be correct because, you know, I just wanted to verify the whole thing. I had, you know, and when I did verify, the relationship had actually come to an end. So being in a relationship with somebody for that long and breaking up the same time when I'm going through this academic exclusion, it, it just felt like I had more weight on me and then more was added, you know. I honestly remember was very heartbroken again the feelings of rejection you know they would you know keep appearing in my in my thoughts because I feel like I was rejected you know by the university now I feel re rejected by the boyfriend you know so it was pretty tough mentally I was depressed I did not even know that I was depressed I used to sleep and never want to wake up I never wanted to wake up because waking up, I was like, what am I waking up to, you know? It just, there was no, like, I I had no strength even to wake up. I remember sometimes I'd only wake up because I was hungry, I wanted food, you know? And also, um, I also think that at that time, just because I was going through so much, you know, the heartbreak, you know, the exclusion, feelings of not being worthy you know overthinking anxious about the future what am i gonna do next what am i gonna do with my life do i have the strength to be able to do it because i would just came out from one of the biggest universities in the world and i didn't get my degree will i be able to have the strength you know to go after something new again you know i remember I used to hate it when my phone would ring. I think we used to have BBMs back then, you know, Blackberry. Oh, I used to hate it when my phone vibrates. Yo, it would, you know, frighten me. Oh, I remember I even changed my phone. I got those little cheap 100 rand phone without internet, you know. I was like, whoever wants me, they will call me. <laughs> um, I just didn't want to be part of the bbms and all of that and also one thing i i do when i'm going through a tough time i tend to like isolate myself i need time to digest what is going on by myself so that i can be able to you know go out there i sometimes tend to overdo it and it's not good especially when you're going through depression it's not good to be isolated by yourself because your mind is constantly thinking negative thoughts so it's good to be around people who are going to make you feel good about yourself you know encourage you inspire you you know just make you feel a little bit lighter in life you know bring people who are going to bring in calm 
and joy and peace and happiness into your life you know and understanding you know so compassion all of those things you know i became very insecure and vulnerable and i was also suffering from exhaustion and also just the emotional toll of the whole academic exclusion and also going through you know the breakup and all of this emotion it just takes a mental toll on you you know it becomes way too much and you get exhausted you know mentally and physically you know and also another thing i think that i was also lucky to be able to process my emotions also with the breakup i was able to to process it even though it hurts i was able to feel it you know i didn't try to suppress it you know i was able to feel it which was great for my healing journey and um, i remember this one time i was watching tv there was deepak chopra on the oprah winfrey show they were playing like old episodes but this time the Oprah Winfrey show had already ended but on SABC3 they used to play like old episodes so Deepak Chopra was there he was talking about you know the power of meditation and yoga you know how you can have peace within you even when you are faced with challenges you know it just honestly really spark a light in me you know at that time I was going through so much you know my heart was heavy just from experiencing the academic exclusion you know i wanted to feel that peace that deepak chopra was talking about i wanted to experience it you know i remember the he did a little bit of meditation he was teaching people how to meditate i i tried it a little bit you know and then also I also tried to do yoga but I did not have a yoga mat so it was a little bit challenging and I remember somebody very close to me gave me a book The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho that this is still the same year when I was doing when I was taking a gap year that book is amazing guys it literally changed my life and i feel like it came at the right time it changed my perspective you know i was feeling very down very low insecure sad disappointed you know hurt you know not knowing what will happen in the future anxious you know worried anxious overthinking all of those things so what the book teaches us there's a lot of um lessons that i i was able to take away from the book okay i'm going to share some of them with you that book the book is about you know the boy santiago who is in search of a treasure you know he goes on this journey in search of a treasure so what i was able to take away from it is pursuing your dreams and being able to follow your intuition and they talk about you know the process of pursuing your dreams is as equally important as achieving you know your dreams i also learned about mindfulness and presence that it is important to remain present you know in life and be able to appreciate the beauty that is around you at that time i was not even I mean when I was going through my my gap year before I read this book I was not even present you know my mind was always worrying about the future or worrying about what had happened in the past so the fact that I was able to you know learn about this whole mindfulness thing that you can actually be present and it is in the present moment that we are supposed to live and experience life and that's when you're able to see the beauty that is around you you know they also spoke about you know fear you know that you know our fear holds us back from pursuing our dreams so we have to overcome our fears in life so that we can you know fulfill our potential and one of the things that i love they speak about the language of the universe right that the universe always sends us signs or omens around us and that we should be able to pay attention to the signs and the omens around us because they will guide us to the right path you know 
and also you know one of the things that i was able to take away was the importance of you know love and relationships you know love and relationships um they play a significant role in shaping our lives you know and i also just learned a lot about you know nature nature teaches us so many valuable lessons about life and simply by just observing nature um it produces insights into the interconnectedness of all things around us you know i learned a lot about material possession you know and inner fulfillment it is important to stay resilient and persistent especially in the face of adversity you know we are always going to have challenges you know and overcoming those challenges it makes us stronger i remember after reading this book i felt a lot more lighter you know all the the baggage and that i was carrying from my academic exclusion and you know this heartbreak you know the first boyfriend heartbreak you know i felt a little bit light you know and it felt great and i remember i also cut my hair i used to have long hair long relaxed hair i cut my hair i went bald and honestly time heals everything guys i can honestly say this about my first relationship time heals everything feeling those emotions of heartbreak and being able to let go of it time heals everything guys i'm telling now that i'm older sometimes i look at things that i was crying about you know for example the heartbreak i'm like girl why were you even crying <laughs> it's so crazy it's like things things that were very hurtful and now that you're older it's just like you know it feels like nothing but i think again it just shows that you learned and you have grown and evolved you know which is great so i did my own little research in terms of like what do you want to study now you know what is the career path that you would like to go to university and study for you know because honestly what an amazing opportunity it is to be able to go to university and study i was like girl yes you failed at one university but we're gonna get back up again and we are going back to university okay i ended up deciding that i was going to study bachelors of accounting following year i decided to go to the university of johannesburg so excited you know new feeling fresh not even worried about heartbreak or worried about you know what had happened at uct now i feel great i feel like i can do this you know i have an experience from one of the best universities in south africa i'm going into another university I got this I, I was lucky to have people who were you know living in Joburg so they were able to show me around which was great so I went to the University of Johannesburg to study bachelors of accounting what happened is that the degree was a three-year degree um, I ended up doing those three years in six years and still at the end I was not able to get my degree okay so <sighs> there are so many challenges um that i faced um during this whole six years you know trying to get the degree honestly there was progress every year that's why i kept on going you know even though the degree was three years now just to take you through a little bit of you know some of the emotions that i went through um I remember when I started, you know, failing at university. I remained positive, to be honest. I tried to remain positive. I would say I would watch, you know, motivational videos on YouTube, you know, just because I, I was already coming from another university and I was excluded and I did not want the same thing to happen here. So I knew that I had to surround myself with things that were positive so that I do not slip back into what had happened in the beginning of the year when I was taking my gap year because that was not a great position to be in 
I mean, when I started failing, I remember I started, you know, just getting, just being anxious, you know, like I started worrying about, okay, I like giving up was not even an option. You know, I was now here at this university studying a course that, you know, I chose for myself. This is what I want to do. But the course was hard. Okay. Mentally once you start failing again it's just like what is going on you know i did slip into depression during that period i was very anxious you know oh i used to hate it you know you know when marks come out and then you have to go online and check if you passed or not my heart would be I used to hate that it used to give me so much anxiety oh my goodness when you struggle with depression it not only affects your mind but your overall well-being your physical health you know is also affected I know most of the people probably here know me as a model I know <laughs> Even when I would go to photo shows, people be, would used to think that I was a full-time model. I was actually a student studying bachelor's of accounting at UJ. I think what had happened, I will explain the modeling video. With modeling, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time with the right people that were able to work with me in so many campaigns and you know photo shoots so i felt like i was so lucky i would spend majority of my time at university because that's what i was there for you know also i would not say i was a, a big clubbing person i hardly go to clubs i would go you know but like once in a while you know it's not really my scene my friends and i um back then we just used to we like fine dining you know go to a restaurant melrose center you know rosebank or you know melville just you know sit down dine talk have nice conversation you know which i found it to be very very useful at the time during my academic journey at uj because i had people around me that i was able to speak to the one thing that i did that when i look back on i think it really honestly saved my mind and i was not aware of it so i will still um practice yoga i remember somebody very close to me bought me my first yoga mat um when i was doing my first year at uj i was so excited you know everywhere i would go if i was visiting people i would take that yoga mat with me because you know i wanted to practice initially i remember when i was at uj when i would practice yoga it would be for the sake that you know i was doing it for the intention that oh i'm gonna have a good body out of it right i had forgotten about the mental benefits of it you know so i still did yoga even though i was not consistent when i would remember i would do it and to be honest i think it was amazing because it helped calm my brain when i was anxious you know due to consistent failing at university i know that this might not work for everybody i'm just sharing my experience with you guys what has helped me what was useful in my experience so to be honest practicing yoga if you deal with anxiety or depression you know it could really really help you you know in terms of like reducing your stress you know balancing your hormones it saved my mind tremendously from overthinking it helped me become more present you know I was able to enjoy the beauty that is around me you know and I also just want to mention the importance of having hobbies or activities that you participate in is very important because I remember um, during this six-year period I was at UJ I still did um, a modeling even though I was not a model full-time I would do it part-time but I remember it would feel like a great 
escape you know from my academic life i remember school would be so hard and for some reason i would book you know like a nice modeling job and i would have to go there and shoot obviously the priority was school first so nice for me to get you know modeling gigs and have to go to shoots it felt like a breath of fresh air i mentioned to you guys that i also had this hobby growing up where i used to you know model we would be playing you know pageants as kids you know so i kept it with me you know throughout my whole academic journey i still would book jobs here and there and then go to shoots it felt great to be honest so i also noticed that having hobbies that makes you feel happy and bring joy and happiness into you is great in life because when you are going through tough times it might just be those hobbies that bring in a little bit of you know happiness into you you know I remember we also I also did um, a little bit of running um, with my housemates but then we stopped if a lot of people would start asking questions like when are you graduating you know what's going on with school people would talk guys <laughs> you can imagine i used to hear all, all of it guys one time this other person was giving a motivational talk and one of the people that are related to me happened to be in that talk you know in the meeting so this person is you know motivating the kids and telling the kids listen i used to be friends with this other you know girl from the same school who happened to go to cape town to study and then ended up stopping and ended up you know doing modeling so basically she told them that i stopped studying and i became a model so when i heard the story i was like oh my goodness it's so crazy because i have not even seen this person since i passed matric <laughs> you know i was a part-time model the whole time you know it was so crazy even when i heard about it i was just like oh my god listen if this story was able to motivate one child in that crowd who if one child was motivated through that talk your will was done you know whether they used me as a reference to their you know example or you know motivation it literally has nothing to do with me if it was able to motivate the kids great so um i remember during the time when i was at um, the university of johannesburg at uj when i was failing um since i had been studying at university for such a long time um sometimes i felt a little bit ashamed to be able to talk to people because i felt like people would not understand my situation you know would people be able to see things from my perspective would they be able to understand why you know i'm still at university studying will they be able to have the capacity to receive it you know because most people don't you know most people didn't have an understanding of what i was going through sometimes you would you know like try to speak to people in hope that they will be more understanding and instead you get judgment you know but i also think that it's not everybody who's going to be able to understand your story it's not everybody who's going to be able to relate to your story you know some people have the capacity to understand it to receive it and to empathize with it you know and some people don't and it's okay just because i had the fear and the shame of reaching out to people i would say that i tend to suppress my pain with toxic substances and it was not good for my health so it's really important to reach out to people guys when you're going through a tough time in your life it's important to reach out to people that you can trust i know it's not easy when i look back 
I'm like, I cannot believe I went to University of Cape Town. I did three years, I got excluded. I went to another university, I did six years and I got excluded. I'm like, girl, you should have lost your mind because honey, it was not easy. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, it was not easy. Every area of my life was affected. And at the end of the day, guys, challenges will come. It is up to you to decide what you do with the challenges. You can learn from them, let them teach you, use them as stepping stone towards a brighter future or you can sit there and be depressed and worry over what has happened which is not good you know so cultivating the right perspective when you are going through challenges is very very important you know being able you will always have challenges you know this is the gymnasium of life we're always going to encounter challenges you know so having the right mindset is good you know taking care of your mind having activities that you know are good for your mind that grounds your energy even when the even when there's a storm on the outside you know you're able to come to that place where you ground yourself and you just be you know you just sit there and you just be and you enjoy the present moment the beauty that is around you one of my hobbies right now is going to hiking i enjoy hiking it's beautiful one time one day i was thinking that you know hiking is much more just like life you know you go on onto the world excited to see you know the world and realize your dreams and all of that and life gets a little bit hard along the way you know just like hiking you go on a hike excited to see beautiful views you know and for some it becomes challenging while they're hiking because their fear of heights hello me you know but as you go as you go on on the hike and you you go higher even when you have like fears of heights if you are able to just stop and look around you honey you will see the most incredible views you know and those views will just fill your heart with so much warmth and joy and peace and happiness when they talk about peace that surpass all understanding guys i felt it i'm telling you i felt that peace that surpassed all understanding when i was excluded from the second university i was like but for some reason i have been held together you know protected you know provided for throughout my whole academic career you know I, so one of the things that i love about meditation and yoga is that it makes you become aware of your thoughts your actions and your choices and i was excluded from the university of cape town when i was taking the gap year i felt a little bit behind in life you know because i saw people were my age graduating you know starting the new job i was like oh my gosh i feel left behind you know as a result that just brought in more anxiety you know into my life but i remember even throughout my academic journey at UJ, you know, I became comfortable in my path. You know, I was no longer worried by the fact that I felt left behind because, you know, people of my age are doing this and that, you know, I felt comfortable. I felt like this was the right thing for me to be doing at this moment in time. And I was happy with my path.
you know when i did get depressed i would worry about it that oh my gosh what are you still doing here you're failing at university you know you should be working you should be doing this and that but majority of the time i had the sense that okay this is my path you know just because i didn't get something at 21 does not mean that i'm not gonna get it at 30 or at 40 you know meditation also just like helped me calm my mind and be more accepting ac accepting of my path and my journey that you know this is my journey i will encounter you know problems and challenges along the way and that has nothing to do with my worth you know because the experience the things that i experience here on earth are here to teach me you know so that i can learn and grow you know so my worth is not really dependent on the things that i have been through those were lessons there were redirections and i'm very very thankful for because they have led me to new opportunities you know new growth level new new ways of thinking new ways of you know taking care of my mind my body my spirit you know so not all is lost i think when it comes to failure it all depends on the perspective in which you see it you know you can either look at it from a perspective of fear or of love when you go with fear just know that there's a lot of resentment anger you know guilt shame embarrassment and as a result you end up getting sick physically because of those because you're holding on to those things you know but if you hold on to love and you choose to see things from a perspective of love and understanding and compassion and joy and peace and happiness it fills your life with so much peace that surpass all understanding it's literally crazy how you can become in the midst of the storm how you can go through the storm and come out not having lost your mind like that's crazy so yeah and i heard um one time i was watching a video on tiktok i i heard this other guy explaining the story of a farmer he's a good farmer good to his workers you know he has a huge land where he grows you know for example maize you know throughout the year they take care of the farm they do the best they know how the farm is great to his family to his friends to his workers and just a day before the harvest there's a huge thunderstorm and it floods all everything in his farm he loses all his maize now he has nothing on his farm it does not change who the farmer is his character his personality who he is essentially on earth you know it was just unfortunate that there was a huge thunderstorm that came and wiped out everything you know in his farm and what is important is how the farmer decides to see his situation you know is he gonna sit there and mourn and do nothing or are we gonna go back again you know and plant more maize you know at the end of the day it's all up to you as an individual to decide what you want to do you know to stay in control of your life of your mind of the thoughts that you think so yeah to do i used to listen to a lot of motivational talks a lot of like spiritual teachers uh, for example i mentioned deepak chopra i listened to joe dispenza oprah and you know a lot of spiritual teachers that i would listen to during my academic journey at uj i needed something to keep me positive you know i could not afford to be negative a lot of the spiritual teachers that we they used to talk about gratitude have an attitude of gratitude you know that you know before bed you must say five things that you're grateful for I used to do that even on days when I did not even want to mention a thing to be grateful for because to be honest even though school was hard and you know the finances you know friendships relationships 
everything even though things were not easy there was always something to be grateful for you know i had food on the table i had roof over my head you know i had the opportunity to study at university you know i had good health so it's always good to stay grateful for the things that you have while you are working for the things that you would like to have you know because sometimes we forget that we have so much already while we go on the hunt for the things that we want every i honestly hope that i've said everything that i wanted to say obviously there is a lot more but i don't want to make this video long and you know i understand that not everybody goes through you know academic exclusion um which is great i would not wish this experience on anyone um yeah it's just as much as you learn a lot along the way it takes a mental toll on you and if you do not have the right resources around you you can it's easy to just get lost just like that you know so if you have been through an academic exclusion or if you're going through one right now or if you have gone through any type of failure in life you know to the best of us you ought to have gone through some type of failure okay <laughs> they're not even failures they're just you know lessons redirections you know so if you happen to be going through it you know it's important to seek help from a professional you know it's important to have activities or hobbies you know that are going to lift your spirit up you know activities that you can always do even when you are going through you know tough times in your life you know it's good to be surrounded by people who are going to inspire you lift you up encourage you people who are understanding compassionate you know and have a reverence you know for life i think it's good to be surrounded by such people and yeah we are all here learning life sometimes does not go our way but how you get back up again is up to you and you can do it okay we all can do it you know i'm gonna end this video here i hope it will be useful to someone to the few people that watch and um yeah bye guys <laughs>